we need to have role models. We need to have people who are not perfect, who are broken, who are not, who are willing to say I was broken. Yeah. But now I'm not, and now I'm good. And this, what happened. And so if I made it through and I'm better than ever, and I'm smiling and I'm healthier than ever, then this will give you maybe a hope that you can make it to. <laughs> Battle line podcast. Uh, man, we have been really pushing out uh, as much as we can and as good of guests as we can and really getting people on all platforms to do what you can to increase the listenership. So whether you're on Apple Podcasts, if you could leave us a review, all of that stuff helps. Uh, Spotify, YouTube, we have some videos that are doing really well. Yeah. Um, we have videos that are like nearly 100,000 views. So subscribe, leave comments, all of that stuff helps. We are also now on the Sirius XM app. Um, I just saw Dylan over the weekend who works with us in that aspect. And um, yeah, we we have a lot of stuff in uh in the works to really step things up for this podcast. And it's thanks to you guys, yeah, the viewers, definitely. the listeners, um, to keep us going this long. I also have to add here, Chris that you've got two events coming yeah. up in Wichita, Kansas, June 28th, June 29th. That's coming right up for people hearing this. Yeah. And you know what I was going to say, man, people always hear about you being on the road and doing events, but the truth is you're mainly doing speaking engagements that are kind of corporate gigs, private. You haven't done one of these in a I while. Have. So if people could drive to it, like this is pretty big. Yeah, yeah, it is. And Hey, stand by guys. Hold on. I forgot. I even had it up here. Give me a second. <laughs> Ah, here. here it's right here guys this is the new stuff so i haven't done a book signing a bottle signing in like a public one in in probably two three years so there's the vodka if we could see it ton of vodka myself and ben morgan he's from first ranger battalion he's my 50 50 partner on this great guy when, eventually you'll you've seen his ugly mug he's come on our show before as well so check out Ben, but it'll be at Vorshay's Lounge there in Wichita, Kansas. And then also that'll be the evening one, June 28th from six to whenever, whenever we want to get done. And Vorshay's is a friendly place. And one of my, one of my buddies that was a, a military contractor is named Steve Peters. He runs the bar. So it's very friendly to first responders, veterans, law enforcement, but it's friendly to everybody. But if you're one of those, okay, come on down and, and we'll do some, we'll have a drink and I'll have books there as well. And then the following day, it'll be at Total Wine there in Wichita. And that'll be from noon to three. And again, same thing. We'll sign some bottles if you want them, grab, pick some up. And, and I'll also have books there as well. So come on down, public stuff. I haven't done public, you're right. Public stuff, Ian, in about two years. And um, yeah, it's a great place to start them because it's in my home state. And it's at Wichita, which is only a couple hours west of me. So I hope to see you guys there. Definitely either Vorshays or Total Wine on June 28th or June 29th. That's perfect. Uh, Antonio Zabato Jr., this is an awesome interview that we just recorded that you guys are going to hear. Yeah. We do get into some fitness-related stuff, and so it's appropriate to talk about Bub's Naturals. Uh, I've been getting more runs in, and when I do, I love the hydrator dye. They're apple cider vinegar gummies. If you're looking to lose water weight, if you're looking to release toxins and de uh, detox, that stuff is amazing. Uh, apple cider vin vinegar gummies with the mother, and of course, their flagship product, uh, collagen protein, great post-workout recovery, but also helps to rehabilitate your joints, your bones, regrow uh, hair, nails. Yeah. We've been using this stuff for years now, and we love it. Now, Fountain of Youth, guys, is tremendous as well. Use that as a pre or post. I actually use it more for post-workout, but it does. It helps you with your energy levels, boost your, it boosts your immune system because it's got all that vitamin C in it. And honestly, just mix it with a little milk. It tastes great. And the collagen and the MCT oil, I use it in my coffee every morning. And if you've seen that Lou ad with their use the Ace Ventura little promo that that bubs has put out where he walks in there is all amped up that's exactly what it does what you put in your coffee so best collagen protein out there best supplements out there and they also give money back to the glendora memorial foundation my ex-teammate uh when i was with the grs unit there in libya so uh yeah tremendous company tremendous ethics and the best best protein collagen protein supplements out there by far 
Check them out, bubsnaturals.com. Use the promo code BATTLELINE. If you're a first-time customer, you're going to get 20% off your order. Once again, bubsnaturals.com, promo code BATTLELINE. But let's get right over to Antonio Sabato Jr. This is an awesome interview. You guys are going to love it. From Kansas City to New York City, from planet Earth to extraterrestrial life in space, a podcast with no equal, engaged in unconventional warfare through your speakers and headphones. This is a show about embracing the suck, conquering your demons, and finding God in the face of adversity. Chris Tonto Peranto. Which is on. Mother, I'm gonna shoot you in the face. Ian Scotto. You know, Ian and I have been dating for a long time. You are now tuned into the Battle Line Podcast. The Switch is on Battle Line Podcast, a guy that we've been meaning to have on the show actually for quite a while, that a uh, longtime friend of Chris, Antonio Zabato Jr., uh, yeah. author of Zabato, The Untold Story, uh, co-written with Tony Moore, actor, model. I know a lot of you guys listening know his stuff. Um, we were kind of BSing before the show started and actually getting a little bit into your origin story. And, you know, when we had Pablo Schreiber on, I remember one thing I said was like, so many people, no matter what year it is, move to New York, move to L.A., and they have this dream of becoming an actor, becoming a rock star, becoming a model, yeah. and and very few of them are ever going to accomplish it. So I would love to hear, like, the origin yeah. of that dream from a guy who made it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, thanks, guys, for having me on. It's a pleasure. Both of you are are. are amazing people and uh chris obviously i've known you a long you just time. met me but i appreciate yeah. it no, right? well, <laughs> no, I, i've heard you and i've, I've heard your program well, and, well, nice, nice. your okay, voice I'll is unforgettable it. we and, and, you, well, and you know antonio is one of our biggest supporters back when benghazi came out i mean that's how actually i you, you tag something on when i had my old social media accounts and i you know i getting them back and they, you know, it's, it's just a pain in the ass build them and we can get into all that <laughs> damn yeah, bullish, yeah. bullshit on social media but that was, that's how we became, you know, I would say social media friends, but I would say it's turned into a friendship was, was he was very, very supportive. And I was like, holy shit, it's the, it's the sexy dude. He's, he, he loves <laughs> the, he, he's supporting. It's like, that's, it was, it, I don't know. It was one yeah, we'll, cool, we'll get cool into things. it, but yeah, let's, let's start with that. If that's cool. Cause I would love to hear, like I said, the origin story. Yeah. Well, you know, listen, my father was an actor, was a race car driver, was a, was an athlete. And I have that in my blood. I've always competed in all kinds of sports. I'm 52 years old. I'm getting involved in all kinds of stuff right now, physically that I want to do. I want to get back into motor racing. I also want to get back in professional something, but it's always a challenge in life and you got to make those dreams happen. You got to go after things that you want to achieve. And, 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 um, cause life is way too short. You never know what could happen. Oh yeah. And God has blessed me so much. So I, I just think that, um, you just got to push yourself no matter how hard it is. Uh, every day, there's always an, an opportunity to create something, a new buzz, new this, new that, um, and just try to focus on getting yourself to a better place uh, as, as a human being, because you can't take care of anything. You can't really deal with life unless you're good with yourself. And um, so, you know, going back in the day, I've always wanted to become an actor. I grew up in Italy. I grew up in Rome, Italy. And my father, like I said, made a lot of films and I wrote this book, just recently came out, The Untold Stories, talked about my parents, how they met, um, the stories that my, fa my family went through with uh, my mother's parents, my grandparents, and Auschwitz and World War II and the Communist Party and socialism in our lives and losing yeah. our home to a fire and moving to this country. There's just a lot of great stories that I thought would be, be fascinating to share with the world, especially people that feel that they're against the wall, the that it's over. It's never over, man. Life is so precious. And uh, and so I moved to New York on my own and I want to become an actor who just barely knew the language. I was living in Los Angeles before that, went to school as a teenager and 
all kinds of schools, got kicked out of some schools. And I just wanted to become an, whatever. I was in the mentality that my parents raised me right. They said, you know, you work as hard as you can. You go after your dreams and you, and they can't say no to that, you know, no matter what, no matter what you want to do. And I tell it to my children, I, you know, I, I left high school before I, I didn't even graduate. I actually graduated two years ago. I went back to school and no I got, oh, wow. yeah, I went back to that school. Cool. Yeah, I went back cool. to school <laughs> to learn all that, all that, all that weird language that I didn't know anymore. And um, <laughs> it was interesting. So I did it in one month. I got four years of high school and got it done. And was that because uh, of pursuing acting that it was just like you, you got some opportunity? Yeah, man. Well, I went to so many schools. We went to LA and we were just, we, you know, we didn't have a lot of money and we were just kind of, at first, when we moved to Los Angeles, my parents wanted uh, my sister and I to go to a good school, but we couldn't afford, uh, you know, we couldn't afford the private school. So wow. we, we had to get a fake address and join in Beverly Hills saying that we were living there only in the first year. Then we went, we were actually moving to Beverly Hills on the edges. <laughs> it was like the edge of Beverly Hills, LA. We were able to, but at first they said, they, my parents, um, uh, yeah, they went all out for, for me and my sister. Uh, moved to a new country, with no money, wow. did it legally. We never take any money from any programs or anything like that. They did want us to go to Beverly Hills and go to school there, which it was not easy for me because I didn't speak the language. It didn't matter what school, but at least they wanted us to go to either that or Hollywood High. And those are two different schools, as you know, and safe and all that. But, but um, so we, we did what we had to do, man. And, um, this country allowed us to, to expand our dreams. Uh, yeah. And it's, that's why I'm so devoted to people like Chris and, and what they do. And I'm so thankful Thank you. for whatever, everything they do because, and you as well, because we wouldn't have the freedom to be here, to be speaking, to have, to sleep good at night. And um, so I was always driven and my family has always pushed me to, to do the right thing, to, to follow the law, to get better emotionally, physically, no matter how old you are and to be the best you can be every day for yourself and your family. You know what I mean? God. No, you know, I, I, cause my grandfather, I don't uh, Antonio, if you know, he was an immigrant, he, Mexico, Joaquin, it was a Garcia and he came over and I, I it sounds similar. I mean, I, granted, yeah, I, I, but I, I had a good, cause you know, I was born in the States and I could speak the language. My grandfather had already established himself from yeah. being a picker to owning his own farm to being well-respected. So yeah. I, I, you know, in the community, but still yeah. there was that, possibility and i want to get into because i'm hearing it the truancy that we have the possibility of getting into trouble every once going up in high school but that shapes you because you get into trouble oh, all the time is is there is there a story that and the, the listeners here have heard uh, my stories of getting into trouble but oh, where, yeah. where the, you got in trouble and it was like maybe god stepped in or the parent and just like you got lucky oh, as hell that do you have yeah. anything like that because i love to I, hear, I love truant stories about because we get into trouble that's what we do but that's how we become successful if we get kind of lucky, though, we don't fall because you're on that fence, man. You can fall. Yeah, no. One way or the I have other. Many stories. Uh, depends what year you're talking about. <laughs> when I was in high school, if you're talking about high school. I yeah, 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 high school. Let's do high yeah, school. Yeah, I got kicked out uh, of my football team and the school. It was a Catholic school. And on during Halloween, during my sophomore year, which I had to do again because I went to all these schools. So I was redoing my sophomore year. I was barely 16 years old. And I decided to take all my boys out. Uh, and there were, there were Mexicans, <laughs> there were Latinos, they were all my boys and we're hanging out in this Honda Civic, my Honda Civic, in we were Honda like Civic. 10 of us. You're in a hoopty, man. Us. You're in a little hoopty, man. A little freaking Honda Civic, 1984, white with sheepskin. And we're all hanging out, manual, by the way. And we're all hanging out, 10 of us in this car going down Manchester, um, down at, uh, in LA. And um, some of the dudes that we don't like were next to, next to us. We went at it. We, we got in a fight on the street. It was, a, you know, people came out. It was just, it was all over the place. So the school found out the next day, obviously, and they kicked us out. We couldn't play for the rest of the season. And um, but that was, that was my first introduction into my Catholic school in, in uh, LA. <laughs> how, how did your parents react to that? And what, what kind of turning, I mean, I, and I think it's good for all parents to to hear this, and even myself as having kids yeah. and having to deal with 
but what action did they take and did it shape you and to be like you know what i yeah i, I screwed up parents, bro my my poor parents i put them through so much stuff then i got arrested and I, all of this stuff i mean there's a lot of things that i've always done and, and i think at some point my parents said you know what <laughs> whatever he wants to do he's gonna do so we'll just support him because he's out of his mind just like his father was like my dad and um but in a good way, you know, we're 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 old old school, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, uh now it's a whole different ball game. But I, I I tell you, but in those days, a fight was a fight, and you get in trouble, you get in trouble, and you pay your dues, and that's it. And you move on and you learn and you get stronger because of it. It's just the way life I was always on the street. I was always eager to meet people, get in places. Um, I don't know, it's just the drive that I've always had that. But in that sense, I got kicked out. It was a bummer, but uh, it was what it was. <laughs> well, when, when did the idea of uh, acting, acting, modeling yeah. come about? Was it just yeah, yeah. the environment of being in Hollywood? Oh, uh, well, I grew up in Italy. I was I was always intrigued with movies. I just watched films, and I've always wanted to learn the language because, especially the musicals, because the musicals left the music part into the original language. And that, so that's what that's what your father and he he was. That's what he was. A, he was in, right? If you're he was in a lot of sixties movies. He was in yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. F one movie of all time called Grand Prix. And and then he did a lot of uh, American films and French and Italian and um but I grew up my father never took me on the set when I was little. Uh yeah. he was very, very protective of me and my sister. Yeah. Uh but we did hang out with celebrities. I didn't know who they were. I was I was young, but it was the Italian people and you know, Claudia Cardinale, Sofia Loren and so forth. Um, so I was very, very blessed, you know, uh, growing up with an environment that I didn't even know, but looking back, it was like, man, I was fortunate to, to be around the situation and to be involved with that. That was great. Amazing. Yeah. And I cut you off brother, but I, you know, you're getting and being around in, in Hollywood. And like Ian said, reiterate that did that you you're in Hollywood, you're in the Beverly Hills area. Yeah. You know, and, and your father, because I, I thought you really got into acting because of your father. I mean, but it sounds my like. Father, yeah, my, well, but, my father was in the blood. I always wanted to make movies because uh, I wanted to, I wanted to become an American actor. I didn't know, even when I was a little boy, I just wanted to make films. I wanted to do what my father did, but I didn't really, I watched all my father's movies over and over again. I didn't know how they make movies, but I just wanted to make films. And, and I wanted to race cars or just to do something. I was always in boxing. So I was either going to become a boxer, a soccer player, a race car driver, or an actor. Those are the things that I really enjoy doing. And um, and when then the acting took off, I ended up doing, I didn't end up doing all the other things that I wanted to do, but I've always trained boxing and I've always raced cars. So I right now in my life, I just want to do all of it. And um acting was you know, moving to the moving to the states was fascinating because that that intrigued me to go to Los Angeles and go to the acting schools, and uh, learn the language and 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 work with other actors and you know learn to read a Shakespeare play and doing all of those things really intrigued me. Um, so and I started doing all those things in L.A. So when we moved there in 1985, that was my main goal. So I, I knew that, but then over the years, I was like, you know what? I still miss racing and I still want to, yeah. you know, so I want to do all the other stuff too. Good, Ian. I mean, I know you're, no, no, I, no. I, I just want to know I, what your big break is, is you, you're moving into high school. You're doing all the, all, all that you're getting into the acting, but it, yeah. I, it just didn't happen overnight or did it? Oh, I mean, no, no, yeah, it took, I think so. Yeah. A lot of time and uh, a lot of rejections, a lot of castings, a lot of auditions, um, like I said, I started really young. Also, I started when I didn't even speak the language. It didn't matter to me. I said, I work it out. When I first got my first, one of my first jobs, I basically could barely speak, but I learned everything that I was supposed to say. And I just said it and I knew what it meant, but I didn't speak the language, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, so I kept getting better and better. And, and, um, and then like I said, I left high school and I moved to New York and that was just the only goal for me was you're going to make movies, you're going to do TV shows, whatever, you're going to act. You're going to, you're going to be a working actor at some point. And uh, so I, I fought for it. And, um, and then it was a time that I enjoyed really well, which is the time that I had with my father working on movies together when I got older. And um, those moments I'll cherish forever. Just being on sets together, getting in trouble that, yeah, together. That was 
you know, getting cool. in fights together, me and him, you know, <laughs> somebody said something to him and it was, I jumped in. It was like, there's a lot of ego. Okay. Wait, I, I got to hear that story, but that, that is cool. See, <laughs> I mean, people know Antonio Savato for acting and the modeling, but I yeah. want to hear that is to me, that's Real what I mean. Yeah. Who, you, so what happened? What, what happened? How, you, you, well, yeah, you it was several fun. events. I mean, my, when me and my father were together, there was either it was paradise or, was, or, or, or it was hell. Because if somebody says something wrong, then my father took it the wrong way. That was a confrontational event. <laughs> it was a, a pay-per-view event. That's why I want to box so much because I grew up in that environment. It, was, it wasn't like... Back when I grew up, when I was 16 or even younger, when my father took me to school every day in Rome, there was a fight happening every day. My father would fight with somebody, you know, like road rage every day, five days a week. <laughs> it happened. You know, one, me and father against two, my father against one, me and father, my father against three. And I'm just in the back seat. What was it eight years old, nine years old going, there's another day in the life of the spot, baby. <laughs> And my father has never, I never seen my father lose a fight. Um, definitely a street fight. He's never lost a street fight. I saw it with my own eyes. Never, not even two guys could take him down. Um, wow. So for me, it was like bound to happen. It was like, I'm going to get into it too, because what am I going to say? I'm going to step away from protecting my dad or somebody yeah. says something to my dad. So we were working on this TV movie uh, mini series in Rome and, one of the one of the guys that was taking care of our trailer was was extremely rude to the makeup people, to the ladies, and he says something wrong or whatever. And it was a really hot day, and he didn't supply the air conditioning or something like that, whatever. So my father says something to him. He says something back to him, and all have broke loose. And I mean, the the whole production shut down. It was it was just, it was it was one of those days. But um, it happened constantly. It happened a lot. Um, I have stories to tell you. I mean, you know, we we got in fights even with cops, you know, undercover police officers one time that we didn't even know they were undercover. So we had to kind of retrieve a little bit because we didn't want to end up in jail for too long of a time. So we kind of had to use our chops as actors to turn it around and go, you know, if we if we if we do it together, we can get out of this one. Um, after calling these two people the worst names and getting it. <laughs> <laughs> and a physical fight, we were ready to go, and then they pulled their badge, and it was like, oh, "Well, geez. sir, let me turn this thing around." You did the and, Jedi uh, mind trick. You, these are not the yeah. droids. You're yeah, it was. It was like the turning point of like, yeah. man, these two are good, you know, because it was like the escape zone, right? It was like I looked at my dad. He looked at me. I was like, okay, this is the moment in time when you have to make a decision. <laughs> And uh, we made the right decision and it worked because we didn't. I mean, the guys were going to we're going to cuff us up and, and, and throw us in jail. But uh, they didn't. We walked away. We our acting chops worked. That is that is a cool story because you're a great father man, and it sounds like your father and, and, you know, God bless him. Rest his soul. I know I know he passed, but was yeah. a was a wonderful father as, as well. And, I, you well, know, there's I, other things I, I know. I, I and, and, and Ian knows this. I'm like a cat, like chasing. Over, I'm all over the place, brother. So yeah, we'll, no, we'll this, we'll go this way, this way. Yeah, yeah. You know, how has that helped you with being a father yourself, bro? I, I, and I know I you're be a better father. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I looked at those things and go, I don't want my kids to see me fight. I don't want my <laughs> kids to see me if they if they're gonna see me fight, they're gonna see me fight in the ring. They're yeah, gonna yeah. See me fight in a gym. They're gonna see me fight uh, as a sport. Um, which is fine, but on the streets, it was, it, it, it put me in a place where self, self reflection to a point where it was like, I got to be a better human being for my children. I got to be a better human for me, for God. And, sure. uh, and so those things that I walked away, uh, the stories of my father and are, are amazing stories that I cherish, but I also learned extremely hard from them. And I was very fortunate and blessed not to getting worse positions because it could have been worse in a lot of those times. But um, I think that kind of comes with age too, is that you, yeah. you realize like, I think for all of us that our parents did stuff probably that were like, I wouldn't do this. This doesn't reflect <laughs> on how I would choose to raise my kid or something. Um, yeah. and, and it's, you know, I also feel like in this kind of current PC environment where people will say like, Oh, if if your parents did anything toxic, cut them out of your life. And it's like, no, you got to take the the good with the bad. Unless someone did something absolutely horrible to you, you could look back and be like, man, what the fuck was my dad thinking? But at the same time, be like, man, 
what an amazing guy, right? So there's always a reason for everything. And I think life, I think in general, is about learning about yourself, what yeah. you're here for, what you're here to give, uh, what you're here to share. What have you learned with this with this process? Are you a better person today than you were yesterday? What are the choices you made and how you can make them better choices next time? It's about learning about by yourself. Yeah. It's kind of like and it I mean, never ends. It never ends, even never probably ends. at your age, right? No, it never ends. And I and I don't think you want to you want to keep living and you want to enjoy every moment like it's your last. Um, and look what look what you know Chris has been through, and he's yeah. here sitting down and going, you know what? It, it could have been the other way around. So yeah. the thing is, we are so really truly blessed. When people understand the blessings that we have every day, they really don't because they're so concerned with the stress level that we that we're dealing with. Um, that it takes them away. I think most people are not even relevant with what's going on because they're so, I think, in the dark. And when you're in the dark and you don't see anything, you're blinded. And so I think that's what God is there to do. I think if you share the light, something pure like Jesus, something good that you can share that it opens up all kinds of things and you start getting cleansed. You know, well, you, 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 you don't feel trapped because it, you know, it's it's a path and you're not looking to rash. It's not rationalization. It's not cognitive dissonance. It's it's a hey, man. This is the path. That's this, this what I was at night. It, this is where I'm supposed to be. OK, it sucks. Nobody's coming. But this is where I got to be in the world. Just And I think most most combat veterans that have been through more than one to will tell you that same thing. It, it You know, people say you get tunnel vision when you're stressed. We don't. It goes it's like, whoa, I can see everything because it sucks. Yeah, embrace the suck. I'm here. Let's go kick some ass and and enjoy. And enjoy watching an explosion. I'm not going to lie to you. It's beautiful. It's freaking beautiful. Only you, have, you have to be able to enjoy it, though, like that. The and amount of adrenaline that you <laughs> went through because it's a state of mind where, you know, it's, what was it, the flight, hit or fly, whatever. It's flight a fight, fight, or fight or flight. The yeah. fight or flight. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. You, you're in that zone where you just, uh, and your you're, body, what, what's amazing what God gave us, right? Because you were able. Yeah, yeah to keep your mind at ease where your body's at ease where you don't frantic and go into, you know, you can pass yep. out. You can, there's a lot of things that happen to us yep. that you, that you yeah, it was amazing what you did, man. Cause you kept it together. Well, it's, it's the acceptance that you just talked about accepting what's going on. God put you there. This is the path. This is where we're supposed to be. All right, let's, let's, let's continue to, to, to drive on man and, and finish the mission. And, and you've had, you, you've had to do that. You know, you, it's funny because you talk about fighting and and you are a fighter, bro. And and I saw your post on on X where let's put all these guys in the ring and let's get them in a fight. It was, I like that. I like that idea. Hey, man, let's fight <laughs> like the old fashioned way, man. I want to get it on, and that's why I think it's important. I think it's great this whole celebrity boxing thing that's going on right now because it's part of our DNA. The old days too, it was like when two people had a problem, they square off one against another. The winner is a champ. Move on, shake Move on. hands, have a beer. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that was across the board where it was, you know, if it was a political arena, you would disagree, you shake hands and you went on facts because you can't beat the facts. You went on those, shake hands and move on. Now the the the, the social media and the, and the awareness that we have on a daily basis is just um it's it's crazy and it's evil, I believe, because it's just changing people's minds. We got to go back a little bit and look at look at you know, 20 years ago, how things were different. 30 years ago, how things were different. Um, and look how fast it's moving. So we need to get back to the basics, I think, that bring us to human beings and go, look at me, I look at you. I might not agree with you. You might not agree with me. But do we find a common ground here that, uh, oh, you like this? I like this? Oh, let's go at it, you know? And But those days are over. And um, I, I tend that's what I'm trying to teach my kids. I'm trying to teach my kids every day to be honest, to look at things in, in an objective way, to take your time, to learn, to be patient, to breathe, to appreciate yeah. what God has given you. Um, just take a day at a time and don't focus about what the system is trying to, to push on you, but what you are trying to give the system, what the world, what the lies are. Everything is a lie right now. Everything is a freaking lie. I would say, what, 90%, 100%? It's really a lying type of world that we live in. Nothing is really truthful anymore. And the truth is changed into something negative where it's like, oh, so I'm telling you, it's like telling a kid you can't eat the lollipop 
but hey, you know, I'm lying and the kid is right. He's going to get the lie. He's going to keep getting it and getting it and getting it. And uh, nobody's responsible for anything anymore, my friends. And, and I'm trying to teach my kids to be responsible for your actions. And if you do something, it's a choice you made. And so you got to take responsibility for that choice. And that's where it starts is at home because you can't yeah. expect that. I've, it, it's got to start within our, so I said, we got to, we got to work on ourselves. we got to personally, I can't control what you do. I can't control what Ian does. I can control what goes on around me, make yeah. that the best place to be. And then if everybody does it, it, prol it proliferates into being a great place again. And, yeah. and you're, and you're right on the fights. Though. I remember growing up there, Get in a fight, then you're best friends after. But you punch each other in the face a little bit, and then and then you're good. And and it, good. It, it's it's not that it's not that way anymore, man. It, it and no. it's, it's it's made it worse because problems can't get resolved. It can continue to go on because of social media. And it and you're it's right. Becoming I, 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 weaker because they you know this whole COVID uh, lie and this whole thing that just happened to to humanity as a whole. Was, was a place to control everyone. And as soon as you control everyone, you're like, oh, well, I can control that easy, the entire planet in a matter of months. That's pretty good. Let's keep doing it. And that's, keep doing it. Yeah. But you fix it by by just continuing to to drive on and little by little within ourselves. Yeah. And yeah. well, that's and that's kind of where I wanted to talk because get to you. Because I was gonna, also going to say, I'm glad you don't fight. A lot of your former agents i'm glad you probably aren't like your dad because you would have knocked their freaking teeth in a few times oh, so it's, it's good you turned over and yeah i was gonna say how would your dad handled the stuff that you went through hey, hey no i mean we go on i'm serious but my dad was living. hired on a movie back in the day this is back in the 70s or even the 60s i mean the 60s he was hired to do a movie with jane fonda and dino de Laurentiis, which is a big you know producer at the time he's you know he's done all you know huge films like conan whatever you name it um he was hired to play the angel in barbarella and as you know oh, no, that no, was no a way. huge film yeah and, no. but what happened was they had they had a problem on set because jane fonda was being jane fonda and jane fonda was married to the director at the time of the film and so the director was like what's going on they're having issues because you know jane fonda doesn't want to come out of the trailer unless antonio is in on set before she gets to it, some bullshit like that, right? So my dad, of course, said, well, fuck her and fuck him, and I'm not going on. She's there on set before I show up. And that's it. And that's how it goes. So she sent her, her boy, director, to come over to the trailer and talk to him, and it took like maybe 60 seconds, and he got punched and knocked out. Right on the gravel, right in Sardinia, right in Italy, right on the set. And then he just packed his bags and went back to Rome. So, I, he, story. Th that is, I, Barbarella is like cult classic movie. <laughs> that was like the first movie I saw where it's like, oh my gosh, I kind of feel a little tingle in my pants, man, watching this, watching this kind yeah, of, it was like, it was like, yeah, it was, like a, yeah, it was very, stuff, very yeah. Ris risky. And, yeah, but was, I didn't know that was your dad was supposed to be the angel. On yeah. the first, no. In fact, if you look at my dad's resume if, and his acting resume, Barbarella is still on it because he was officially hired, but he no was, way. he was, he was fired pretty much on the same day. So <laughs> that's uh, super, super. They were, you know, they, they were supposed to, they were, they slept together on the movie too. I wonder how that would have went, man. They can't, you can't hate each other, but you oh, got well, that was the first day that she got under his skin. And I know it was her because I know my dad better than anybody. I know what happened. I'm, I've known the story for so many years, but I know she, she, she puts, you know, that's just the type of person she is, you know, I, come on. Right, and look what she's yeah. done to the military and, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and our well, brothers he, and sisters. So, um, so it wasn't surprising to me, you know, but it was it was cool that, he, that my dad knocked the motherfucker out. <laughs> hey, hope you guys are enjoying this interview with the great actor, model, race car driver, Antonio Sabato Jr. We are all over the place in this interview, uh, and I think you'll all enjoy it as much as we enjoyed conducting it. Now, I know Fort Scott Munitions has brand new range ammo. You just did a yeah. killer YouTube video with them. Yeah. Uh, people are loving it. So you're the expert, man. Why is the range ammo the best? Guys, it, it, we've been asking and, and students have been asking for a range ammo that is affordable. So, uh, you know, if you use Fort Scott Munitions ammo, just their standard ammo, that stuff is for, for our home protection. That's for hunting. Needs something that's going to do the same thing, be just as reliable, but also be affordable. And that's what that range ammo comes in. It's still 115 grain for the nine mil. It's tremendous. 155 grain for the for the five five six. 
and it's affordable so you don't feel like you're wasting a bunch of money out there plinking paper best ammo by far in the business now it's not just self-defense ammo that's the best ammo by far but it's also the range ammo and guys that stuff works and again it who doesn't like saving a little bit of money in this day and age so guys go try it best ammo out there get that range ammo you won't be disappointed i promise you absolutely and speaking of saving money you're going to save even more money through us when you use the promo code battleline you're going to get 15 percent off when you go to fsm.com promo code battleline only available to our listeners and fort scott of course has always supported the podcast and all that we do here and we appreciate it that's why we speak so highly of them every week we also speak very highly of the best night vision out there none other than photonist defense now you can have the superpower to see in the dark with the viper binocular night vision system by photonist defense it's the global leader in night vision solutions providing more high quality night vision capabilities than anyone military law enforcement and public safety end users utilize photonist defense solutions to give them the edge at night in tactical situations and rescue operations hunters shooters boaters and enthusiasts can rely on the Photonist Defense Viper Binocular to become masters of darkness. The new Viper Binocular system carries the same features and benefits as the Photonist Defense Viper Monocular with a ruggedized body and harnesses the power of the echo intensifier tubes, giving you sharper images, reduced halo, and industry-leading ultra-fast auto-gating across the range of dynamic operating conditions. Visit PhotonistDefense.com for more information or look for Photonist Defense product options from your night vision dealer. That's P-H-O-T-O-N-I-S defense.com. This is high quality night vision, guys. This is not something cheap that you're going to get. So this is a high-end product and it's high-end quality. So we hope you check them out. Uh, with that, we're going to get right back to this interview. What was, uh, what, what was like <laughs> the, was coolest, the coolest show or the coolest movie for you that, that you were a part of that like, is, is for you your favorite part of your resume because it's big well a great film that i produced and i started and is coming out this september uh it's called grace by night is a beautiful film about redemption and about a man who lost everything he comes back to get his life back together and it's just we won so many awards for this film and i was so blessed to be part of it and um uh, yeah, Grace by Night is the most uh, the, the film that I really feel that uh, it's a, the, the best film I ever made, uh, and I'm looking forward to the world to see this film because it's what we need. But as far as the great experience on uh, movies that I've made, one of them was The Big Hit with Mark Wahlberg. It was yeah. great. We had a great time, Bo Keem and uh, Lou Diamond Phillips and everybody, Christina Applegate, and all of us were hanging out in Toronto um, shooting this film. Produced by Wesley Snipes and Terrence Chang, and um, that was it was a cool movie. No, that's that's yeah, straight it was up, yeah. It was, it was that back when movies were just fun, just yeah, fun, fun movie. movie, exactly, fun film, um, action comedy um, that we worked really well together, and we had a blast. Yeah, so that was that was a fun fun film and fun film to promote. Um, but I, you know, I, I I just had a I just blessing looking back in my career. I just had I worked on TV and. Yeah, reality shows and obviously a lot of films and I, I work with military people. I've trained with them. Yeah. I train with soldiers. I've I've shot every type of machine gun and and driven. Yeah, you live the dream, man. Like when I was talking yeah, about yeah. Well, what you came to do, you accomplished it, man. It's it's amazing. I mean, I race cars at Indianapolis. I, I I've flown planes. I jump out of planes. I've teamed up. Like I say, I train with the best people in the military. Um, I work with the best people in the military and films and things that I've done. And um, I, you know, I met presidents and I've been to DC and I just, a lot of things that I've, I've been really, truly blessed to, and it's still going, man. It's not over yet. It's not no, over you're, you're, still, you're still, you're still young, bro. I'm 53. I'm a got you by a year. You're still young. Come on, man. Man. We got a lot of stuff to do, man. <laughs> we got a lot of, a lot of shit still got it. And you're always, Hey, just, and you're always welcome. If you're, I know you, you don't come to the Midwest often, but if you're ever in Kansas, you're always welcome to come shoot. I got right. Oh, I love to come down, man. We'll, we'll go, we'll go down and shoot and, have a good time or if I ever hold I sometimes we I do little events here where I make people come like you you come off the beaten path I'm not coming you to know you what guys. what show I want to do I want to show that SAS that special forces thing or that other one that they do uh with our boy all the special forces Ru uh, oh Rudy Rudy yeah you yeah. talking about Rudy Rudy yeah Rudy. yeah, yeah I, I want to do that show 
Yeah, yeah I want to was, Oh, I've seen you know, yeah, I, I was going to ask you. What's that called? I've been trying to get, it, I've been trying called, to get Mike called, Piazza on the show because he was on with Rudy. I would love to get, and I got to meet Piazza special, once. But, yeah, yeah, Special Forces. This is called Special Forces Making the Cutter. Because in Australia, yeah. they call it SAS. Yeah, it, no, no, yeah, and you're right. You know, they got Brit, SA, they've got Rudy, they've got SAS guys, they yep. got all sorts of guys. But don't Rudy, forget Mike Piazza, man, the legend, and, who, and does Mike, currently oh, live in, who does Come currently live in Italy. Baby? Oh, hell yeah. Dude, the Mets are on a roll right now. Hey, you shut up. The Yankees, hey, Yankees. Oh, Yankees yeah, are yeah, amazing yeah. right now. Oh, but did God, you know, the guys did, are you know Yankees and Mets. did you know uh, Piazza <laughs> currently lives in Italy? Yeah, he went back yeah. to Italy. And, he owns a soccer team, I believe. He, yeah, he owns stock in a soccer team, and uh, he, yeah, went back to the roots. Uh, me and my wife are actually gonna. Well, we we, we are going to spend a lot of time, and uh, probably half of the year we're gonna go in Italy. That's cool. No, I've, I've never been. I mean, and I'm Scott, you know, Scotto, so I'm Italian, but I've I've never been. So. Oh, there's it's the best place on Mother Earth. Yeah, wow. my parents have been many times. You know, families originally from Naples, Italy, but never been there. You know, it's 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 kind of like. America used to be not too long ago, and now you got to go back to the mother country, where <laughs> people use common sense to a certain degree, and it's scary that we got to stop that. We got to bring that common sense back in this country. It's um, yeah. So going back to Italy, it's just like, for example, you know, we have no processed food in Italy. It's I've heard, yeah, I've heard that so much in the world. So wow. you don't get, you know, when when we go there, we never gain a pound of weight. And we probably eat twice as much as we eat here because, you know, you have two yeah. main courses. We have the first dish, the spaghetti, the meats, whatever. All. And we walk a lot and we do, you know, we do a lot of sightseeing and see a lot of our friends, whatever. But at the end of the day, that food is not processed. We live right now in America as the most unhealthy country in the entire world. Oh, yeah. There you yeah. Go. And I, I mean, obviously, it goes without... Just poison, it goes without saying, just looking at you, you're a big health and fitness guy, and I know that you post Girl, about this stuff sometimes. They're poisoning everybody. They're poisoning. They're poisoning everybody. Yeah, I mean, I, what I was going to say is like the food is is designed to be addicting, and and the worst food. And that's what that does. The Bible even talks about it. The food is the first thing that you're going to fight for. You're going to die for, and that's what's going on. The changing it, and it's also killing you because it's killing a lot of. I mean. Probably the most unhealthy. I mean, if you look at things that they're selling at fast food places, my goodness, man. We're talking uh, food yeah, food. I, I think the best thing that could go on right now is them raising all those prices as those fast food places because people are starting to not. Yeah, I don't know it's about not that, so though, easy because I, I, groceries are just as high every yeah, day. But, but at least, hey, if you're going to spend, no, I'm going to Kansas. I'll spend <laughs> six bucks for, for peanut butter and four bucks for a dozen eggs in Kansas. Are you fucking wow. kidding me? That's wow. horse shit. You're, but yeah, that, my, you know, just from my daughter herself, when she last time she went to, and she, uh, she goes to McDonald's, I, she works her ass off. She's playing basketball, playing volleyball. She has the metabolism like I did when, when we were, but she went, that's like 19 bucks for a burger and fries. She's not going to spend that. So what does she do? Well, I mean, she eats at home because daddy's paying the, but it, that's one thing about Kansas also getting that is, is that I have a, we have a butcher shop. That's little town Kansas. I mean, three, you know, so I can still go get fresh yeah, meat. The best fresh. Food. I, I they still sell on the side of the road right now. You when you go out, they they've got the tomatoes and the cute. The people are selling their gardens because, so it, it, you are so right on this damn poison because the healthiest I've ever been has been living in this small town here because we don't go out to eat. We eat everything at home and we can buy it I locally mind, sourced right here. My friend, I wouldn't mind eating and spending the money. If when it's something is good, like the old, like, sure. you know, if, if, if you're serving food and I, and I, like, that's why in, in our community, we live in Florida, we live in North of, of Tampa yeah. and we, in our community, uh, it's very old fashioned where everybody just supports the community and the local markets, the vegetable garden, you know, all yeah. those other places and, and local restaurants. So I don't, you know, if, if it costs more for the restaurant to, 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 to get a staff and to, to buy food as it is right now, more than ever, I, I don't mind paying for something good, right. you yeah, know, I agree. Um, yeah. but, and you got to find those places and they are those places, but, yeah. um, and the community that does create that, but overall, overall the cheapest stuff and things that make no sense are being sold to the next, to the next generation and to the, the generation that is dying right now, which is like, people are dying. I mean, we can get into why they're dying for many, many reasons, but, uh, food is huge. Uh, it's huge yeah. for cancer. Uh, it's creating cancer cells all over the place. 
and not talk about not to mention the obesity and uh, blood pressure and um, I mean the list goes on and on in our country if you look at if you look at events like uh, I don't know like concerts all over the world and you see people hanging out in those concerts whether it's European or North America even like Canada or Australia you see people that are much thinner than Americans you see a concert full of fat people in this country because it's not that they're being they're eating to the point of no return. You're eating portions that are thousands of calories um, on a weekly basis. I mean, and and they're and they're you're eating so much sugar and carbs, yeah. and there's so much processed food that uh, you don't even care. So you're just eating well, the, it. The problem is also like you're not being satiated because all you're eating is like high fructose corn syrup and yeah. and sure. crap. So it's crap. like we've all experienced this uh and i i rarely eat any of this crap anymore but let's say i drove over to chick-fil-a man i could easily eat a bunch of those fried chicken sandwiches and a fries but it's like if i go on my grill and i cook a half pound of salmon and some brown rice and broccoli i'm full i don't need to eat anymore yeah. because right. i'm getting all the nutrients that i need and that food is not designed to be addicting my, my friend listen we live in a society that the world and it's amazing. We live in a society where it's the most expensive life. You have to spend so much money to live. But then you think about it. Why am I spending all this money to live? For why? Why should I spend so much money or work so hard my entire life not to know what's going to happen with my job or my life in general to live? It should be the other yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. It should be where we are living our lives and being healthier uh, and more energetic and, and, and driving. Our, that's what our country used to be used to have kids in high school or even like all the schools train hard win football games you know be the leader be the best in the world america's number one now it's like fat and addiction and corruption and lies and not respecting our flag or our military or things yeah. like that which is like we gotta fight till the last second that we don't lose our country and I'm not even talking about any of the political parties because I'm an independent. I could care less about both parties. They're both wrong and they both could care less about you or me. And that's a fact. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you're like the people of this country who work hard. You fought for this country. You let you risk your entire life and you lost so much. And you're like, I'm going to fight for this country and I'm going to have this disrespect and this lack of like integrity or love for, for something more for yourself. We got to fight for that because our country stands. Our flag means so much. Well, I just And I know Chris is going to have something to say, but before I forget it, I was just going to say, when you were talking about how you need to go overseas, right, to live the American dream, and we've had people on the show like this, I mean, it and the cost of living, all the things that you yeah. said, why are so many Americans, including military vets who are expats, uh, you know, make who make money online, guys who we've had on the show like Leo Jenkins, right, who can make money selling books, they're moving to Mexico. There's guys moving to Thailand because they are living what is essentially the American dream over there because yeah. it's not ridiculously expensive and we can all make money online and then live a better life in a country like Mexico or Thailand, which, yeah, it's kind of crazy. And it goes back to exactly what you said. Sorry for filibustering here, but no, yeah, I, I needed to say that. True. It's completely true what you just said. It's uh, and, and I've known people that are moving to El Salvador, Colombia, you name it. Europe, Italy, whatever, because it used to be the other way around where you used to come, you know, I remember 20 some or 30 years ago, let's say, where you said something wrong about your country. And I don't care about your race, your background or anything like that as a human being. If you said something wrong about that American flag, the entire, everybody, I don't care. Maybe you disagree about all kinds of stuff, but when it came down to our flag and our country, everybody united. Everybody said, no, no, mm -mm. yeah. yeah. And and it was like, no, we're going to stand for our flag. So now it's over. Everything is over. We're not going to move. It, it was it was a direct thing from everybody. And whoever considered themselves a patriot American who loves this country would stop that discussion and go, no, our flag comes first. And that's it. Um, and we have beliefs with God and all that other stuff you want to get into. But when it came down to our flag and loving this nation, this land, um, it was everybody was on the same boat. Everybody was cleared about it. And there was no discussion. Now it's, it's the, the system of, you know, listen, there's a lot of people in the world, well, not a lot, but there's a good group of people who control the planet, 
who control the military, who control the government, who control everything. And if they want you, they'll have you and they'll destroy your life or get rid of you uh, if you come in the way. Um, and we've seen it over and over again. Um, even our president, uh, even in his own house, in his own closet. Um, and uh, those are scary times where you feel that, because we had at least you... I don't know. Listen, our government has been corrupted for a very long time. But I think there was a time, my friends, where the people were in control. And that's where our Constitution and all our beautiful amendments are there to do to protect us because they knew that this was going to happen. And they said, you guys are out of your fucking minds. and You're going to destroy the planet. You're going to destroy our country. You're going to destroy everything you touch. But if you leave it to the people and you leave it to them, then maybe as a whole, we'll take care of it. And we'll fight for it because we care as a unit, as a family. Um, and I think the core internally of this country is still there. It's not as huge and, and, and vibrant. But I'm hoping every day that even if it takes one brick at a time, that we all come to our senses and see the lies of everything that's been going on and go, okay, enough is enough. We were fooled once. We were fooled twice. Are we going to be fooled three times on everything again. And I hope that we don't. Well, I, I, I think it will. And that's all I was going to get into where you're talking about standing for the flag and first. I, I did. Hey, when you get left behind by your own government, the one you swore to protect and then, you know, I served in a, and all of us by that time, that whole team, we weren't new to any of this. We had served for years, you know, many, many years. And, uh, so it was a shock and to come back and then, then have people within the media, and I know how you, 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 you know, you, you know, this feeling, the people in the media that control calling you liars, like, wait a second, <laughs> wait a second, man. I just watched my buddy die on a rooftop and you're telling me that I'm not telling you the truth, but that is where that strength that the patriotism and the flag came. And I, it took me and Ian, Ian was part of that rebirth of me. I, we could call I was, it. Where, all right. <laughs> well, wait, it's when we decided to do the podcast when I finally, oh, had to get right. my, you know, get, get, he was, he was a big part of that where I was like, you know, I got to stop being angry all the time I, I, making, I, you making know it's funny i never saw you as angry man and that's I mean, a, and, yeah. and we, we've talked about this but in anger where i'm at home going this this is bullshit this is horse shit and then well i mean yeah you go on fox and friends and i said i was going to choke out a president yeah i'm pretty pissed off on live yeah. tv yeah, i didn't see that i think <laughs> that, that that was probably a, a but, time where we weren't really speaking that often but yeah but it's coming out of it so I, I do believe that we are brick by brick, brother. I, and I will never lose that lose that optimism because I went through it. And I know that I if I can get through where I felt left behind, literally and figuratively left behind yeah, and, even, and even shit mm -hmm. on by people that I even protected. And the team can can vouch for me on that. I'm sure they have the same feelings, Tig and Oz. And they, they, they're they more vocal on the political spectrum, Oz and Tig are, than I am. Um, but yeah, Because uh, they're pissed, man, because you guys went through hell and back. And you had the boss over there going, hey, I'm sending you guys to take care of business. Uh, when you need me, call me. I'll take care of it. And you're like, we're they, here. We need you. And there are people dying and you're doing nothing about it. And you're and, five minutes away. Yes, and, I understand, and, man. I'm more, I'm as pissed as you are. And I think, listen, what you went through, you carried, you have no, like people don't understand what you went through, but also you were having such a stress level of a magnitude to come back for such hellhole that I, I can't even fathom the idea of coming back to a place whose country and going, you motherfuckers left me to die. And my friends, when all you had to do was make a call and take care of people, human beings who are fighting for your mistakes, for your problems, and you want us to stand here and risk our lives and go, oh, it's all right. Don't worry about it. We'll call you later. Don't worry about us. Don't worry about us. What? We're good to go. And um, that's lack. That's that's the system, the political thing, all that stuff that's going on that's going been going on for such a long time. Of people, human beings like yourself, have to be taken care of. And if we're not going to do it, if these people are not going to do it, then they shouldn't be hired to take care of a job. And that's where we're at right now. We're at such a crossroads right now, people. Where like, can we go through another four years of what we have seen? And I'm not talking about a specific party because they're both in it. They're both in the club. They're both in the club. Well, they, and they were both in the club when they were both in the club. There. They, they, exactly. Both in, so, exactly. Yeah. And they didn't do anything about it. And then, and then 
things go kind of like it's kind of like one of those smokes you know there's there's a there's a house on fire you see all that but then after a few days they forget about the house it's burned down to the ground they move on to the next house it was on fire and and that's how our social media and the media as a whole because when that happened which was a huge event was probably one of the biggest events in yeah. history. And so, and, and Tony, I was going to say, like, whenever we have anyone um, on the podcast who's in their twenties, I always try to like reiterate that because I don't, I don't think they understand the magnitude of that don't. event, and you and I do. So, not, not personally, obviously, event. but I, I understand how big it was in the media. Well, our country has never, has really never left anyone behind to a, to to the point where we saw it with our own eyes. We're still seeing it though, because you know what I'll We're tell you right seeing. now. I mean, I mentioned it on the last podcast. When we talk about, and I mean, this would be a whole nother subject. I'm sorry if I'm getting off track, but um, when we talk about the hostages in Israel right now, for some reason, they don't even report there are American hostages over yeah. there right now. Mm -hmm. I've never really heard Biden even say we have Americans over there right now. Like, I think, and look, I am not a fan of of uh, Netanyahu, I, honestly, for a few reasons. But I feel like there's been more energy focused on what he's doing wrong rather than let's get American hostages back to America. My friend, it's 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 all this corruption that they want the they, they want it to happen. Everything is programmed, everything is done on purpose, everything is controlled. Wars are made on purpose is the reason why it's not to protect people, it's not to make a better future for them, it's the worst. And as you know, Chris, you know that wars are designed. By the politician, by more human beings who are working for the devil, going, I'm going to make these decisions. I don't care how many people die. It doesn't matter what happens because this guy's got to get paid. This woman's got to get paid. This one's got to get some money under the table. You got to go out to dinner. You got to go on this. So that's how it works. That's how people are in the higher places. That's how they deal with human beings like Chris and people in the military, or even just humans, as because we pay the bills, taxpayers. We take care of their problems. We're in more debt than ever before. And and people in Washington and they make decisions which is like they live in this surreal. I don't know what it is, but it's like it's a science fiction movie right now. I I can't believe that people allowed other people to get elected to control. But then I, I looked it even deeper and I go, they're controlled by other people who control the companies who pay for this, who control the stock market, who deal with the the, the medical thing and the weapons and the military. And that's how it is. And I and I and I tell everyone, do your homework. Search, find out the truth, what it really is the truth and what isn't. And well, then pick up your mind. It, it is control. It's always been control. Wars are for control. Most of wars are control and money. It is a lot. It, it always, you know, it it for the most part, it I'd say World War II, probably that's the only one that was that wasn't. Um, maybe World War One, that that's even I try to read the history on that and it's still muddled to me on World War One was so huge, but after that, it is yep. control of money, and that's what yep. the world goes around. It, it it does with the and politicians living in D.C. and working with the agency and having to deal with a lot of that. They do live in a bubble. It is a surreal world. It is a it is something that has no consequences. And I can tell you an example of when we were doing our testimonies during the Benghazi hearings, and mm. Trey Gowdy pulled Mike Rogers yeah. as a clown. Terrible, terrible person, Mike yep. Rogers. But when Trey was doing his, and Trey was actually very good. I, I like Trey. I thought he was very good to me. Mm -hmm. But I even told Trey Gad, I said, hey, when we're doing these hearings, if you don't make an example out of one of these people here, and I said, Hillary, I said, and I said, I don't know how you're going to, but I said, Obama, I don't know how he's going to make an example. Of it. But if you don't make an example, then you're never going to have control and they're going to be able to do whatever they want. You've got to make an example out of one of them, even Patrick Kennedy or Charlie Lamb, one of the undersecretaries, you've got to do something. If you don't, then it's just going to embolden them because they're going to get away with it. And then they're going to be emboldened to do something else. Well, we here did. we are, here we are. What is it? 10 years later? Yeah, pretty much they get away with everything. So, and, and it's just making an example of one. One and that will scare living shit out of them because the majority of politicians are fucking cowards, dude. Yeah, they are. And, and, and you know, the only time that really we've seen a change in government is we really you step up and you have a leader who makes drastic changes, but also the people follow that leader and yeah. they all do it together. Uh, and obviously, you don't want people to get hurt or to have a civil war, but. Now you don't you don't want I'm telling people you don't want war. I mean you don't I, want you don't want that. I've because, seen wars and wars are no. you never want to go to that level. And I say that 
is that a possibility that could of course it's always a possibility in every country because people are different i would hope it here it wouldn't be but all of us that have fought in wars do we want to see that again no i i i, I okay. came back to america because this was disneyland this is right. where this is where i could come back and I yeah. don't have to worry about getting blown up when I go get coffee. I don't have to worry about getting shot when I go, you know, drive around and go put gas, you know, because we lived on the local economy when I was with the agency. We didn't live on bases. Yeah. We lived in the town, which was cool. Right. But right. but to say that it's not a possibility, no, I'd be lying to you. Is it? But I don't want to yeah. see it. Cause, so. But then also, I think people in general as a whole, because life has become to a certain degree, very easy. You know, you, you can get any type of information on the internet. If you have really two brain cells, you can sell some stock here, boom, boom, whatever. You can you can live, really. I mean, it's just really, you can do a lot of damage in a good way. You know, if you really have yeah. a street smart thing about yourself nowadays, you can get things done. You can, you can, you can reach certain things you couldn't do it before. Yeah, and, there's, and there is great, th you know, it's funny. That's why it's like, I don't want to be pessimistic because there is like, um, when we had Brad Thor on, I don't agree with this, but when we had Brad Thor on, he said, we're living during the greatest time in the history of humankind. I don't know if I yeah, entirely agree with it, but we are living during a great time. There are great things happening. The same things that you're talking about, you know, like I, I personally love what's going on with Bitcoin because it's like, we have five, we have this infinite currency that's printed out of thin air that's worth absolutely nothing. They just keep printing it and printing it and printing it. And now I think people are like, yeah, I want to have a finite resource that is going to be limited supply. It's and It's going to wake them up. Value. It's waking and, them up. Yeah, and it's like the more I'm learning about things like Bitcoin, I'm like, wow, this is awesome. I, I love the fact that we have this now. And we, because it's actually a, it's a giant fuck you to, to the banking system. Stuff. So I do think there are certain things going on right now that I that I love and I think are better than they were 20, 30 years ago. Not everything. But, but does that things, teach absolutely. you that teach your responsibility? If I have an infinite resource of this money, then pretty much I can go do whatever I want forever. Yeah, that, and that's I the whole point. Like I don't know if I don't know not, if I, I don't know if I like that with but that, no, that's the whole point. Obviously, not financial advice, but invest in Bitcoin. I, 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 yeah. we, we, sorry. I, we, no, it's all, it's all and, connected. Antonio, though. I don't think there's anything to be sorry about. It's like about me and Ian are going to go. It, and Antonio it's no, but like it's, it's very true because I think right now people money, are money, saying, money. why, why is my money worth absolutely nothing? And I think if they actually do the research, they'll realize, wow, there's an alternative to this that we have right now at our fingertips. Cause you were talking about stocks with things like Bitcoin that we could actually reverse this for ourselves. Bitcoin to me, I mean, to me is a very dangerous uh, place because it could work that way, it could work the other way, it could work a lot of different ways. But also when you take away the dollar, which is happening at the moment, especially in the Middle East, uh, which is not, you're not able to buy, you know, things like you used to with the dollar, which economically around the world yeah. is very, very dangerous. Um, also for our economy and our, as a whole. So we're still in the game. But if you, if you bring another endless, and also we're spending, we're printing money like, Bitcoin. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the same. It's the same thing. Well, no, no that's, was, that's was, why it's different because Bitcoin is is finite. There are only a certain amount of Bitcoin. That then, no, I, I totally, like I said, for me, I, I stand right and I, I try to let things go a little bit because it's very new and very dangerous, like I said. And so, but like, you know, you have to go with the flow of the society, how things are going. And, and, um, it's very exciting. It's very thrilling as far as our time right now, but it also at the same time is moving so rapidly fast. You know, people are talking about, you know, exchanging brains to somebody else's bodies. AI. We could make an Antonio Zavala Jr. film right now, just typing into a computer. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that are just happening that uh, are just, I mean, incredible to me because uh, they're happening so fast and technology is moving very, very fast. But also, you also know that people in the higher places who are developing these things, who are giving these things to company to sell, whatever, don't really care about humans. No, I don't. So, I agree with that. I don't think they do. So you need to uh, really follow people who really care. And there's only a few because, you know, we talk about, you know, climate change, but people buying more jets, buying more homes. They're selling more homes on the beach. You know, it doesn't make sense because there is no the climate change. Yeah, we have four seasons. Yeah. Summer, uh, you know, falls. Yeah. Winter and spring. There you go. There's your summer. It, it, but it's it's just how the system, again, it goes back to how how do we um, cheat 
And how do we lie to this customer? And how do we sell this product? And how do we brainwash this? And how do we get these done? And then at the same token, we could always bring religion and we can bring and just mind fuck everybody to the point of no return. And then as soon as we get everybody living in the zoo, then they're in the cages and there's fine, they're set. And that's, I think we live in that world. And when you open your eyes, like the matrix, you know, like the movie, the matrix, when you open your eyes to see what's going on, it's um, the only way for me to keep uh, moving forward and knowing the truth is to be a better person. And that's, it comes down to, just within yourself. And that's it. Because and, I can't win. I can't go to Washington to win. I can't win with those people that are worth billions and billions and billions of dollars who can, you know, if they wanted to come to my door right now, done. Yeah. Over. And they could take <laughs> me right now and they could take my house because your house is really not your house. I mean, nothing is really yours. I mean, if government wants something and they want you, they got yeah. you. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they can't. So why it's worry? Scary so, time. So why worry about it? They, I mean, it'd be, it'd be, they, I, I bloody their nose a little bit if they want to come to my door. I promise you that. <laughs> yeah, and you go I, all I, out I promise, I because promise you want to stand up, and I want to go all out, and I'll, and I have all the, you know, everything that I need to. But in reality, you know, a person that doesn't have the finances for a legal, you know, because you know you're gonna have to fight. What I'm saying is that the negative and the the evil forces that are there. They want they want to lure you in to get inside their their you know their cages and so they want to get you in there so the only way you can fight that because I can't fight them on the money level or the power level because they're so high and they know everybody especially Hollywood too they're all in it together so the only way I can fight that and I can fight for God is to be a better person better a better person. patriot um, work hard love more. And and spread the word of Jesus if I can in the way I live, and that's the best thing I could do. Yes. Because that will lead me into helping and doing something. That's what God wants me because in the and I've been in the trenches. I ran for Congress. I, I did what I had to do. I saw how the political world works, and it's really an evil, evil, dark yeah. place that I never want nothing to do with uh, ever again. And um, I'm happy I saw it and I survived it. <laughs> but um it's a very dangerous place um it is I, yeah i wouldn't hey, want to hey antonio i, I want to make sure we get into like what you're doing now promote anything that you're working on oh, yeah, i know yeah, you yeah, talked yeah. about the film so yeah because i mean we're going all over the place but yeah i, I want to make sure whatever you're working yeah on, we, we i want to about because because that for i i did read your the first book was was actually i mean the the checkers of i i didn't know your family with yeah you know, I, I mean that was I, I i don't i haven't read the sec but i did and ian doesn't think i read i read it a while ago so you tell me i don't say that you I, always I know, tell I, me you don't read that much i don't read that much but i did and that first book was i i recommend people read Thank it because because it was very good i it reminded me of my family and the, yeah. the, the being the, the hardship of my grandmother and grandfather my mom and uh, no, nah, but it was like, man, this is, this is, you remembered your roots and this is why you have the work ethic you do now is because of, of, yeah. of, of that. That was the part also, of the book. You know, for me, I can relate a lot, a lot with you because not an, in, in, in a, in a humane way, because I've seen death. Sure. You've seen death and you've seen it with your own eyes. I've seen it with my own eyes and it's not pretty. And, it, and it's, and you see the life going away and you see lives going away and you see things. And I've, and in, in the stories, I've, I've seen that with my own eyes. And um, that could build you up and make you really, really strong in, in your conviction, or it can really break you. And so yeah. I'm glad that you're more solid and more and stronger than ever. And you can give that to other people, your family or other folks, your children, whatever, because we need to have role models. We need to have people who are not perfect, who are broken, who are not who are willing to say I was broken, yeah. but now I'm not, and now I'm good, and this what happened. And so if I made it through and I'm better than ever and I'm smiling and I'm healthier than ever, then this will give you maybe a hope that you can make it to. And so is the second book that you the, so is that what that second book that you've written, Sabato? Well, the first two. the first book I, I released my my first first book was a fitness book because I, I really yeah, yeah. been training my no excuses book was was really uh, my explanation why I do it and why I still do it now, uh, and I've done it my whole life and the sports aspects and um, and 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 
the way I lift, the way I do things, whatever in sports that I choose to to apply myself to and all that. And then I, and then the publishing company at the time that released the first book um, released it the wrong way and I wasn't happy with it. And so yeah. we re-released released it again the second time the way I wanted to make it with all the stories, with all the truth that happened to me, not just parts of things that they wanted to sell the book. No, everything. You know, I did a new cover. I, I wanted to, add, you know, do all the uh, wonderful pictures of all the people that I was able to work with and meet. So you have to see a lot of visual. I wanted people to involve into the story and to the travels and to come into America, back to Italy and back to America. And then my family story, yeah. my father, uh, growing up in Sicily and my mother growing up in Prague and so forth. So it's, it's, it was very exciting. And me and my sister coming to America and and then moving back to Italy and then coming back here again. And so I thought that was fascinating. But the way they released it the first time, which this is a whole new publishing, this is a whole new thing, uh, was released uh, just recently. And I just wanted it to do it. Gotcha. Do it's awesome. right. You know, is, is that the main thing you're promoting? Because I know you mentioned a movie and then also like the race car stuff. Well, I'm doing other things. You can't leave me. I, I'm, you know, I have other jobs and responsibilities. I'm in real estate out here in Florida. Yeah, I saw that. And other things, but uh, I've been pushing racing. I want to, I want to race professionally. So if any racing teams, any racing owners want to call me, uh, I want to get back into racing full time. I like professionally racing uh, cars anywhere around the world. Uh, I, and I put it out there. So, if it happens, God wants me to do that. But also, I, I love, like I said, I love boxing. I love the fact that, you know, they're doing the celebrity boxing going on. Maybe I'll, I, I jump in the ring. And, uh, <laughs> who, who do you want to fight? Who do you want to fight? I want to fight. Who do you want to fight? Who do you want to fight? Who's your, who do you, who do you want to get in there? I want to fight. I, I would want to fight Joe Rogan. It would be awesome to fight. That would be cool. Yeah, boxing <laughs> match, eight, eight rounds, three-minute rounds with Joe Rogan would be fine. That'd be a cool uh, match. Too. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think Joe Rogan would be good because he's, he's he's a tough he's, dude. You know, it's not like you just be like beating dude. the shit out of someone. And we so. have different styles, so that'd be fun just to see. Um, and I would want to do like three minutes, three minute rounds, eight minutes if that if the commission allowed me to do it, allowed us to do it. By the um, way, we got to clickbait that man, Antonio Sabato. Yeah, no, I, 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 I would fight Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Uh, I would fight. Um, I would fight Dana White. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that'd be awesome. And no, yeah. no, we're talking. Are we talking UFC rules? We talking no, no, boxing. boxing. Rules? I want to box. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 the, the grappling on stuff. I think yeah, fifty two. I don't want to risk too much damage. Hey, our, uh, our joints still work. No, like listen, it, the money came in and said, "I'll pay you a million bucks. Uh, I'll get in there with <laughs> anybody. It doesn't matter." Do you, do you worry about ruining the face? I mean, you are a model. <laughs> no, no. I, I well, no, I don't. I don't at all, but also <laughs> got to catch the model, right? You got to catch. Yeah, the you gotta, <laughs> that's and, your money and, maker, man. Got to catch it. But listen, I, I can return with a lot more. So for me, as <laughs> you hit me once, I'll hit you with a hundred. So I hope that one of the hundred will knock you out. So <laughs> if don't, then I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and when you get to 50 Ian, it's a rugged good look. So the scars are okay. <laughs> it's rugged. It's the wrinkle, man. We're rugged. Is that Listen, if I get busted up, uh, <laughs> I got busted up on a street fight, it heals. Uh, that's the least of my problems. And uh, but yeah, I would fight those guys. I would I wouldn't even fight and Jake Paul is busy now, but I would fight people like that, whatever. I would I wouldn't even fight Roy Jones. I would fight Roy Jones right now. Uh I think that would be a good matchup. Um Man, I'll fight anybody. I'll hey, fight. anybody up there. So everybody out there, get Antonio Sabato on your card. He will fight anybody. Uh, but you got you got to pay some money. Because... But you got to yeah, you got you got to <laughs> bring you got to bring you your wallet. Got to give a fight so... a pro appropriate thing. You know, when you fight, and I've been boxing my whole life, and I've been sparring, and I've been training in, in that world. Uh, you might you want to make it worth it. Also, you know, you want to have a training camp so you look sure. fabulous. Um, you want to have a chance at it because I don't, I don't, I don't want to lose. I don't like to lose, and I don't intend to lose. So I want to have at least two months of training. So I don't want to just go. Oh, I'm a celebrity. Oh, I'm going to go yeah, box. Yeah, yeah. But you yeah. know, I want to, I want to look, I want to look and feel great. And um, which is, you know, you have to have that. I have to go back to California and train with my trainer and have a few, at least you know, eight weeks or whatever of training camp. But um, yeah, why not, man? I'll do yeah. it all. Uh, you okay. want to you want to put the best show out there, man. You you got to have the best. It's fighting. It's it is entertainment. It's tough entertainment, but it still is. 
let's put the best product out. You know what? Listen, I got knocked out twice in my life and uh, by really good people. Damn. Uh, and it's, it is what it is, man. You get knocked out. It's all over. And, uh, but you can get up and get stronger and better, or you can yeah. stay down. And, um, uh, and I, I think the best fighters are the fighters who are down, or at least they were down once or twice in their lives. And then they get up and, and they learn from it and they get stronger and they're better and they're better fighters. Just, they can hold out and, they can make better decisions. And I think it'd be fine, fun for me because I'm a lot different fighter now than I ever was. And I think it'd be interesting to actually prove everybody wrong. Cause you know, I'm sure that people will be like, Oh no, he's going to get his ass kicked. He's going to do all that. He's going to lose, <laughs> blah, 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 whatever. And then you just prove everybody wrong and you just walk away to the bank and yeah. take care of your family. And um, so I, lately I, I talked to my wife, I talked to my family. I'm like, all oh, these people, who are YouTubers or whatever, they promote, they market things, and they're fighting. And they're fighting like, Paul was fighting what? Supposedly, it's been postponed, but you know, Mike Tyson is 62. Yeah. He's fighting a guy who's like 30 some years older than him, right? So <laughs> I'm like, they're setting this up and they're doing, the, even Connor, Connor fought Mayweather and he did, he lasted eight rounds. I feel like he Mayweather, because I watched that fight, I feel like Mayweather let him have all those rounds. I feel like yeah, Mayweather had, didn't want to let him have it. People. Because I feel like Mayweather could have knocked him out pretty I, quick. And Jim West, who's weeks. been on the show, who's who's a expert in fighting, he told yeah. me the same thing. He was like, man, Mayweather could have knocked that guy right out. Well, you see, the thing is, I know, I, I don't want to sound conceited or anything like that, but I've been boxing my whole life and I've been following Mayweather and it'd be fun to get, even him. I would love wow. to fight him. I would love to that's fight big. Mayweather. Yeah, I would that's, love that's to fight That's a big challenge. You know what I would do? I, I would love to fight <laughs> Mayweather. Fight Mayweather. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would love to fight Mayweather. And wow. obviously right now, I don't know, he's probably bigger because he's eating a lot more than usual, but I would fight him and I would try to fight longer than Connor did. So I would try to la and I would love that would be a huge challenge. I would love to do that in my ten, ten, 10 rounds, man. With it, I, yeah, even like was, nine rounds, even if I lasted five. nine, one more round than Connor. Yeah, I would just I would just. I'm not gonna lie, team. man. I think I you and Rogan, I think would be a great match. You and Mayweather, my money's on Mayweather. I'm not gonna well, lie. That's fine. But you like the challenge. You like the challenge. Yeah, that. man, that's good. That's awesome. <laughs> but you, you see, know. if that created some buzz. Uh, me and Mayweather, because, you know, Mayweather likes to, I don't know Joe Rogan, if he also, he's got some issues or things or whatever, but I'll fight, I'll fight anybody. Let's put it that way. But Mayweather would <laughs> be fine. It'd be fun because he's doing all these matchups in Japan, around the world. He doesn't care. He just wants to make money. So why don't you just fight an Italian actor, you know, from Italy, who knows that maybe he has a shot at it. It could be like a Rocky story. It could be Rocky. That's what I was going to say. It could be the yeah, Italian baby. stallion, man. <laughs> yeah, like man. I'll fight Roy Jones. Give me, give me two months of full training where I can be with my team in Los Angeles. And I can guarantee you, um, he's not going to knock me out. All right. With, you heard it here. We're, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to push it, bro. Cause I, I would, I think that'd be cool. I, it, it and they great. don't know nothing cool. about me. Like you can say whatever you want. Antonio can't fight. He's nobody, but you have never seen me box. You never see me fight. You never see me in the ring. You don't know what I, I'm coming in. So it's yeah, going to be yeah. great. That's all the more reason for Roy Jones Jr. or Mayweather or somebody to step up to the plate because they don't know. So let's, let's, let's get up, get, 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 get up. Joe Rogan. I could Rogan. be done in 20 seconds. <laughs> I could be done. Or maybe it could be the other way around. You know, just yeah. like Apollo and Rocky, he said, I'm going to knock you out. It's over in like two minutes. Well, I guess it turned out the other way, didn't it? Yeah, yeah keep getting back up. That's cool, dude. Uh, hard work, brother. You don't quit. And that... That, no, you know, that's that's that went there to Mario about you and, and even your story is even after it was all all that bullshit went in Hollywood, you, you didn't stay and cry. You went and found a construction job. That's fucking cool. Oh yeah. To me, to me, yeah. that that's 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 America right there. That's fine. I built me up, bro. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I I went I went in the workforce of America of true American workers. I busted my ass in the mud. For many years, coming from doing movies and traveling in first class, all of a sudden I'm in the mud. <laughs> you know, we, we call it concrete mud, but I was in the mud, and um, and I was just I was just living a different life. And I said, you know what? Pull your sleeves up, yeah, and go to work. And uh, and that's it. It's not about pride. It's not about that. You stood up for your country. 
you can sleep good at night. Yeah. That you did the right thing. And uh, if they want to discard you, but someday, but they're not, it's not over. No. Come, coming back. So I am, never I am is. more back than ever. I've learned a lot. And, um, but going from in that, in that period of time, yeah, I, I pull my sleeves up and I put my ego checked and I go, I got to do what I got to do. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, that's great. That's a great story. Well, that's I, that's all I got, man. I, yeah, yeah. I, I really, man. Gonna, that was awesome. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. for sure. Yeah. I, I was just going to tell the audience. So pick up Sabato, uh, the Untold Story, latest edition. Um, and and add, of course, of course uh, Antonio Sabato Jr. on Instagram and on X. You're very active on both. Um, and yeah, man, th this was an honor. I mean, truthfully... Chris was a lot more familiar with your background than myself. Of course, I know who you are, but I didn't know what to expect in this interview. And I feel like, although we went all over the place, which I love, <laughs> we got a lot out of it, man. And 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 I yeah, think yeah. people are going to be inspired by this. And that's that's really what's most important. I think there's people who check out this show. And, well, you um, got to be at the fight now because we pretty much announced it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. If, well, if, if, it, if it happens, we will be ringside. It's going to happen. It, maybe for they'll sure. let us host it. But I was just going to say, man. you know, I think people yeah, check exactly. out this show and they know Chris's background. And, you know, mainly we have a lot of special operators on. We have a lot of 2A guys on. So every now and again, people may click on an episode like this or the last one with Britt Lightning or Evan Seinfeld and be like, how does this work into everything? And we can and, give it um, back to the troops. We can make the fight all for the yeah. troops. Uh, for our American soldiers and what they're doing. And uh, I would love to, you know, incorporate that somehow with the armed forces and you guys and all the special. It would be cool, man. Yeah. But yeah, just to we finish what I, the point I was making is, is that I think like, yeah, we, we, we try to do our best job to incorporate those two worlds. I think whether it's military two a guys and then people like you actors, rock stars, you know, directors, we've had so many different people on and That's I do awesome. think there's a cool connection there. And, um, and yeah, man, so it was great uh, spending this hour and really getting to know who you are and, and your whole background. Thank you, guys. I can't yeah. wait to uh, spend some time go shooting with you, my yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah, we, we will. We'll, we'll eventually, we'll make it happen, whether I get up to Florida, I, which every once in a while I'll teach you out there. And you're in the Tampa area, so you're up, you're north of Tampa, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Too easy, man. Okay. Or or if I get down to Suffolk when the Special Operations Trade Show is, I'll come yeah. down to that every once in a yeah. while. If I'm in the area, bro, I'll, 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 I'll I got click, my CCW out here and I, I had it in, uh, in California and I, you know, I, obviously I'm a second amendment type of guy. Oh, hell yeah, you uh, are. Yeah, the yeah, more yeah. the better. So, uh, I, I want you to tell me what's going on in the next few years, what the next best, uh, pistols and things are coming out all the new technology because i'm interested in all that and you, uh, you know all the good stuff i'll break it down to you actually before we go then ccw what's your what's your everyday carry what do you carry if you if you I, carry I, I carry a shield that's 45 yeah 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 that's good stuff yeah, yeah hollow point 45 it's an easy gun it fits really well with my big hands and um it's a great gun and it is never i, I mean i've used everything from glocks and 19 and all that i used to carry I used to carry for a while uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, I had my CCW out there, um, my PPK, James. No Bond. way! Now, did you mean to say yeah. your 007 out yeah. there, man? That little, that little thing. How did yeah. the hell did you? That thing's hard to shoot. It. Even no, I it's, big it's, it's it's comfortable, um, especially in your pocket, and it's it's good to have because it holds some punch. Um, yeah. But obviously, um, it's a little no, it's smaller, but it's it's good for. A little night out with your girl. You just yeah, have yeah, 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 yeah. It's cool. But the, the MMP, the shield, the 45s, yeah, that packs oh, some, yeah. that packs some hell. Yeah, yeah. yeah, bro. Well, I just wanted to ask, but man, thank you for staying Absolutely. longer with us. And yeah, this was cool, dude. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate guys. you dealing with me chasing my fucking lights like a cat and we're jumping everywhere. Oh, we both awesome. I appreciate yeah. you. And you thank know, you. I do. And I'll do anything that you need me to do for you and, Thanks, and all the compadres. And, uh, that goes without saying. So 24 seven and twice Thanks, over. Bro. Yeah. God bless you, bro. Thanks, man. Anytime. That's all for this episode of Battleline Podcast. But we're always posting new content on social media. Follow us on Instagram at Battleline Podcast and on Twitter at Battleline Pod. That's an order. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes up every Tuesday. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or your podcast platform of choice. Believe in yourself. Face all challenges head on. And as always, never quit.